As an introduction to our video today, I'm in Inchstewart Parish Church. In 2016-17, we undertook some renovations to the church, and during that, we discovered a burial vault under the floor. This church was built in 1891, following a fire in 1890, and the church that burnt down was built in 1834. Prior to that, it's our belief that the pre-1834 church had situated beside it a burial vault which belonged to the Kinnaird family. Now, in those days, the church actually sat at ground level. And those who know the church will know that currently the church sits about two metres higher than street level. And what we think happened was when they rebuilt the church in 1834, it was raised by a couple of metres to incorporate the burial vault into the actual footprint of the church. And although way back then it was known and recorded that that's what had happened, this had been forgotten over time. And so when we came to do the actual renovations, we were unaware that the burial vault was underneath the church. There had been prior rumours of bodies underneath the church, but no one could substantiate these. And some of our elders had actually gone down into the spaces under the church and could not find any sign of any bodies or coffins or anything of that nature. And so we went ahead in 2016, believing that all was well. What we wanted to do was to make the church a much more welcoming place. And so we decided to open up the north wall opposite the primary school. And as people came through the church gates, they would be able to come straight into the church. The footprint of the vault was actually pretty big. And it stretched from the wall, where the main entrance is now, all the way through here. And it actually stopped just at the end of that first pew beyond the little bench there. The entry point that we found was just to the left of that little bench with the blue cover in front of the pew. So now when you watch the rest of the video, you will actually be able to visualise where everything is. Perth and Kinross Heritage Trust requested a watching brief by an archaeologist during our renovations to look out for any medieval remains. On dismantling the vault roof, the builders burst through with their drill into a void and work had to stop until the archaeologist was able to make an assessment. The video you are watching is taken by pushing my arm through the small hole and filming blind on my phone as there was no room to look in at the same time. Apologies for the shakiness. We can see clearly at least two coffins and in the distance the remains of the wooden vault door. It was from this that we were able to trace back and find an entry point to the vault. Accessing the vault took some effort and eventually, by means of a ladder, we were able to enter the vault and proceed under the guidance of the archaeologist. As we went down the ladder, we were able to see a stairway just to the left, which was later determined to be the means by which coffins were added to the vault as required. In addition, there were concrete mouldings of medieval decoration, such as an angel and various representations of family coats of arms. It became clear very quickly that access to the vault should only be made wearing appropriate PPE and this was duly arranged. In addition, an air purifier was installed for further protection. The coffins are made of lead, covered with decorated leather. In total, there were seven coffins found in the vault, all aligned east to west. It was possible to identify the remains in most of the coffins on the basis of the attached brass nameplates. Although two of the coffins did not have any and the identities of the deceased in these remain speculative. After discussion with Perth and Kinross Heritage Trust, surviving family and the parish minister, it was decided to move the coffins to the south end of the vault with the entrance passage also being used. The assistance of a local undertaker in the moving of the coffins was extremely helpful as they had both the knowledge and experience to do this. It was extremely important for us to ensure the remains were treated with the dignity and respect that was due and a short service of rededication was held to mark this. 
The north end of the vault was then dismantled to permit the continuation of the development works. During this work, an eighth lead coffin was discovered, badly split and partially overlain by partial, disarticulated skeletal remains. These included long bones and two skulls. This coffin was also aligned east to west and had clearly been reinterred, positioned as it was, between two late Victorian brick foundation walls. Embossed on the coffin lid were crests incorporating the saltire and a Latin inscription, Obitiae Decembris Anno 1689, Etatis 73, with the surrounding initials LGK. This coffin was left in situ and covered over. Other disarticulated remains, believed to be medieval, were found as this part of the building was excavated. All of the disarticulated remains were put in two child coffins and boxed in. These were then reinterred below the new building works. And I'll put a note of those who we believe to be buried in the description below. An archaeologist report has been compiled and Perton Kinross Heritage Trust now have a copy of this for their records. Finding the vault and the subsequent recording was costly both in terms of time, we were delayed by around six weeks or so, and cost around £20,000. The cost was met in part by savings realised from other parts of the refurbishment, which the Heritage Lottery Fund allowed us to via, and by using some of our contingency costs. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe if you haven't already, and don't forget to click on the notification bell.